All right, so currently I have the Trump Madison Square Garden rally pulled up on the Fox News YouTube channel. It's got about 239, so basically a quarter million people tuning in just on the Fox News YouTube channel alone. And, uh, you know, I took a break this weekend from making any content just because I am... The election mania is bogging my brain down for sure, but I'm going to stay at it just for you guys. Um, once this is all over, I can take a little breather maybe. But something came to my head that, um, you know, not very many people are mentioning, if not nobody. You know, we're all obsessed with, you know, what the polls are going to say, if Trump's going to win, what's going to happen, you know, this and that. He's a dictator, whatever the, the main stories of the, the week are. But... <laughs> One thing I want to point out that I think nobody is talking about is what this election has showed me. And what it showed me is that traditional media has essentially gone down the gutter. And, you know, I think you can you can look back at 2008. Um, Obama really pioneered the idea of using social media campaigns to um, further elevate, you know, getting out to the youth. But the thing about this country is it's not just the youth that's on social media. It is everybody. And, you know, I know in 2016 the whole thing about, you know, the Russia collusion and all those things like that. But this is something different. You know, you can go on your TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube at, at any point and you can watch your, you know, people of your choice, your echo chamber of choice, your commentators, influencer of your choice talk about your president or your candidate. And, you know, Joe Rogan just came out with the podcast with Donald Trump, and it received, uh, as of the current numbers, 30 million views in just 24 hours. 30 million in 24 hours is berserk. I don't think I've seen anything like it. And this all kind of shows that, you know, because the mainstream is dead, I think, you know, obviously, you know, Obama you know, in the Democratic Party, embracing social progressivism kind of gave rise to the Donald Trump. But I don't think Donald Trump would be nearly as successful um, at any point in history un except for now because of what the Internet has done. You know, anybody's voice can be amplified now more than even traditional media. You know, the last big traditional media thing that came out was, you know, the debate with Kamala and Trump. And, you know, we all remember Kamala doing better, uh, at least than Trump, but nobody's talking about it now. And so that kind of goes to the crux of my argument that Donald Trump has started something that is not going away anytime soon. And I think historians and future candidates and you know kids like me who maybe want to go into office, while we might not replicate all of Trump's policies and things like that, I'm definitely studying and analyzing and trying to understand his ways of reaching out to people. I mean, even Kamala Harris, like Tim Walls was just doing a Twitch live stream with AOC. So this generation is something much different. You know, you need to, like, honestly, what Trump is doing, he's building a super team with RFK Jr., Vivek, Tulsi Gabbard, and the like. You know, this is just, it's just mind-boggling because what you have is, you know, his platform is growing like we've never seen before. And the people who hate him, who didn't have good opinions about him, they're just hating him even more. So you can now get this 24-hour news cycle, truly. Um, you know, we saw that in 2016 and 2020, but now you can get a news cycle that's tailored to exactly how you think. And now your voice has the potential to reach 10 times, I'm just throwing a hyperbolistic number out there, but 10 times the number than any big corporation large media proponent has done, you know, and we've seen, you know, Washington Post refusing to endorse any candidate, the LA Times also hopping on that trend. These big aggregate news companies are losing their touch and people have, you know, whether you're right or on the left, people are having, you know, lost in trust in the media. So this is something that I think is, you know, magnifying and amplifying the idea that the tools needed and the skills needed to win an election are not the tools and are not the skills needed to run a country. But the thing with this social media craze and this internet and this globalization where everybody's connected 
and influencers having more power than legacy media, you know, we have the tools now where as long as you are a good marketer and you can appeal to what the people want and you know how to get that message delivered and you understand the algorithm, you know, the world is the <laughs> the power of the presidency is truly at your fingertips. I mean, if the CEO of Google were to run a campaign and mess with the algorithms to make him, you know, appear more favorable, only index news sites that favor him and influencers, he could probably win. Like, that's how scary I think the media has gotten. And like I said, it's no longer the traditional legacy media that people subscribe to. It's these online bloggers, influencers, commentators, and, um, most common, most politicians serve as an influencer of sorts. I think that Zach Ramaswamy does a, uh, a decent job at it, you know, where he's like going on tour and live streaming and doing all these kind of things, um, promoting himself as almost like an influencer of type. So, you know, as my generation grows up, we're going to see this idea that the influencer and the politician become one and one. And I won't be surprised. I guess this is my little prediction, but I won't be surprised if someone who starts off as an influencer um, rises to the top politically. I mean, Trump, he is basically your definition of an influencer before, you know, that was the thing with the whole celebrity apprentice and, you know, just being a definition of the American dream or what success is, you know, he's always kept that. I think he's understood that. And I think he's, you know, for better or for worse, mastered it successfully. And now you see him doing Madison Square Garden, Joe Rogan and all these things. And he's ascended to such a critical point of so much power and influence. So I think eventually, you know, these streamers, these influencers, these content creators, um, Twitter users, they're going to have a base and such influence that is so massive, just like Trump. Same blueprint as Trump, doesn't matter what policy they run on, and they will be your next politician. So, uh, yeah, this is a very, very interesting thing, and I think people need to or should at least start um, realizing that this is where we're headed, and uh, let me know if you think this is a good thing or a bad thing. And with that being said, um, I hope you enjoy your day, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.